right, so what we're going for now is uh, to enter into a part called the Church Defined. And so what we want to do is pursue Jesus and His Word over, you know, what, what is the church and who is the church. So let's begin with an experiment. It's going to cause us to have to use our imagination, maybe some of our experiences with other people around us. So here we go. Let's imagine uh, that we have a person that we're going to call Person A, okay? And person A, let me describe kind of this person's background, and, and we're going to sort of imagine uh, what this person's experience would be like. Person A, uh, let's say they, they have no knowledge of Scripture, no knowledge of the Gospel. And person A just comes into uh, our city from somewhere far away. They speak our language. They, they understand how to operate within our culture, but they know nothing of the church. So we're going to have person A exist around our city for 30 days, okay, for one full month. We, we, uh, we bring them into the city, we drop them off downtown, we give them enough money for a you know, basic place to stay and just very, very basic food. Not, not a lot of extra, just enough to survive for 30 days. And we say, we're gonna let you off, <clears throat> we're gonna pick you up 30 days later. And here's our goal, person A, when we, when we get you back in the car, when you hop in the car, we want you to tell us everything you can about the church. And if person A goes, well, I don't even know where to start. <laughs> I have no idea what y'all are talking about. We'd say, exactly, exactly. Just, just go get yourself settled somewhere and begin an endeavor. And we're going to pick you back up in a month. And we want you to see what you've observed, what you've experienced, what your knowledge is of, of the church. So that's what they do. For one month, they engage the church in our city. Now, imagine what they would say a month later. If, uh, if we picked them up and we, we brought them out into a room and we had a big dry erase board up or whatever, and we said, hey, go for it. You know, tell us everything. Tell us the whole story. How did you interact with the church? What do you believe the church is based on how you've experienced it? Um, you know, what, what was the story like? You know, what, what did you notice? What did you like? What did you not like? What was, what was interesting, intriguing to you? What was powerful to you versus what seemed like, you know, something just regular and every day? You know, tell us about it. What was that experience like? And if, as they begin to talk, imagine that, that you're the one writing and, and you're going to write down everything that you imagine that they would describe as they've experienced the church in our city, okay? And so uh, this is good, the bad, the ugly, all of it. So now that's person A, okay? So hold them there is sort of the first part of our imagination here. Now imagine that we meet a similar person, okay? A sibling of person A that comes from the same background, but we're going to call this person, person, you guessed it, person B, now, person B, what we're going to do is bring them in, and uh, this time, instead of uh, dropping them off downtown on Main Street, we're going to put them in a helicopter, okay? And we're going to say, hey, in, in one month, okay, we're going we're gonna, to uh, let you be reunited with your sibling, and we're going to take you by helicopter to a remote island. Now, person B knows nothing about the gospel, knows nothing about uh, the scriptures, but again, they can read, they can write, they have a general you know, understanding of how to operate. And so we drop them off on an island. No one's on that island, okay? No internet, no other people, nothing going on. And we drop them off with a copy of the scriptures. But, but when we drop them off, we actually take uh, our, our hands and sort of rip out the section of the Bible that uh, is after Acts chapter 1. So Acts 2, through the end of the Bible, we say, we're going to take this part out, but we're going to give you the Old Testament, and we're going to give you all the parts where Jesus interacted with people. And we're going to ask you to, to read it, you know, and, and read it through for the next 30 days. And we've given you enough food, enough water, enough supplies to last the month. Uh, so it's not going to be a miserable time or a scary time. But you, we want you to get a good night's sleep, but try to spend as much time as you can reading through the, the living Word of God and, and learn about who God is. But And learn, ultimately, we want you to ask you about the church when we pick you back up in a month. And so uh, person B reads the scriptures, you know, all throughout the day and gets a good full night's of sleep. Now, at that uh, pace of just regular reading, they're going to read through the Bible probably a good seven times through, you know, easily within that 30 days. It doesn't take that long to read the Bible, maybe around 60 hours, maybe to, to read, you know, mo most of the scriptures. And remember, we're taking a, a whole section of it out here, you know. So they're going to read through the Old Testament, the accounts of the gospel, and the first chapter of Acts. Uh, a good seven times through. 
Now, at the end of a month, uh, we, we uh, land the helicopter back on the island. We say, hop on in, person B. And now we're going to go into a room and we're going to say, now you tell us everything that you know about the church based on what you've read, based on what you've experienced in God's Word. And so we just get the pen out and we begin to write. Now, imagine what you would think person B would say. Begin to make that list. Now, for the most like climactic part of the experience, <laughs> what we want to do is get person A and person B into a room. And we want to just listen as, as we say in between them. We say, what is the church? <laughs> and then A, A and B, they have to wrestle it out. They have to talk about it. What would it be like to listen to person A's experience of the church in our city versus person B's experience reading about the church in uh, the Word of God? Would these two people be talking about the same thing? What would be the overlap and what would be the difference? How would it compare and how would it contrast? What would you imagine that conversation would be like? Now, this is a, a healthy conversation to begin with, right? Because we want to see the comparison between where we're living right now in culture, how we're living, versus how God showed us how to live. And you may look at this experiment and go, you know, why can't person B just have the rest of the New Testament? <laughs> you know? um, because here's, here's one of the reason why. is because whatever person B is experiencing through that portion of the, of the Word of God, that's precisely what the disciples were familiar with when they uh, participated in Acts chapter 2, which is what we theologically tend to believe is sort of the beginning of the church. And so for the disciples to be able to now lead and live within Jesus' gift of the church in Acts chapter 2, they would only have known what's true from Acts chapter 1 and before. And so to be able to, to take all that was in their head that we know of, now we're not saying everything that Jesus did with these disciples was clearly written for us, but you also have to think that if it was important, if it was foundational, then certainly those disciples played some kind of a role in ensuring that it was passed through the different writers so that we would have that kind of information. For instance, you would imagine if Jesus said, uh, you know, here's the greatest commandment, and then he just didn't finish his sentence according to Matthew, then we would go, hey, Matthew, could you have written that for us, please? You know, I mean, could you have finished the sentence? Uh, so you would imagine, yeah, of course he's going to finish that sentence because it's so central. So if the church plays an a, a, a important role at some level in the kingdom of God, which we all would suspect it does, then certainly the disciples let us know the degree to which Jesus talked about the church. So did Jesus talk about the church? And if so, what did he say about it? What did they know about this operating system, this, this bride, this body, this temple that Jesus was referring to? What, what, did, what did they know about it? And, and how would it have informed person B's understanding of the church? And how would that understanding deviate from person A's experience in the church? We're not talking about just the ideals, right, that are listed out of church. We're talking about the story, the understanding, the whole gamut. This, this includes the sinful nature of man, right? We're not saying B is just telling you ideals and A is going well in reality with fallen man. No, no, we're saying B is reading a book that includes all kinds of stories about fallen man. So how would A and how would B be different and why does it matter? 